Are they here or aren't they? Are foxes about to devastate the state's wildlife and is the mere fear of them being introduced enough to see governments pour money into eradication? Or are politicians and public servants just trying to give ailing departmental budgets a fox-led cash injection? Conspiracy theories abound on both sides of Tasmania's great fox debate. It's a debate that's actually been going on for a long time. Fiona Breen has looked into the history of the elusive red fox. <laughs> It could be the English countryside, the hounds baying, the sound of the traditional hunting horn and the riders perfectly turned out in their red livery. In the 1980s, a hunt was still a favourite pastime for many country families in the northern and southern Midlands, a tradition going back 150 years in Tasmania. The quarry, an aniseed scent rather than a fox. A collection of photographs housed at the Archives Office of Tasmania show one of the original hunt clubs meeting outside the popular Milton Mowbray Hotel. Today's Southern Midlands Mayor, Tony Bisdy, is a descendant of one of those expatriate English hunting families. My great-grandfather was master of the, the hunt uh, for some considerable time and uh, as were many members of the family were uh, members of the, uh, the hunt club. Stories about the hunts have been handed down through generations of Bisdies, and he still recalls family conversations about the popular pastime. From the relatives, uh, there would be probably up to uh, 70 or 80 or even more, uh, depending on the weather, <coughs> and uh, that would gather of a Saturday or Sunday or even both, and uh, would start out on a hunt and uh, they would uh, probably uh, go on the hunt for most of the day and probably return about 4pm uh, and uh, where they would uh, probably have what we call today a barbecue. An original sandstone horse trough and the hotel are reminders of a time when country Tasmania looked almost as English as the home country. Hunting clubs go back to a history in Tasmania that um, probably began in the 1820s with uh, colonial expansion of uh, the valleys um, north of Hobart and south of Launceston, uh, wealthy uh, landowners which were well connected to colonial government uh, got into the things that they used to do very well in, in England. The baying of the hounds could often be heard in the countryside near Hobart and Launceston as men and women chased the quarry, sometimes a deer, a kangaroo or a possum and according to accounts in colonial newspapers, sometimes a fox. I've never heard any of the, uh, the past generation speak about foxes and if there were foxes there then they'd still be here today and they're not. Uh, certainly not in this district that I'm aware of and uh, if I think there'd have been a sighting uh, you know we'd have all heard about it but uh, I don't ever believe that uh, they brought out foxes in those days for the purpose of, uh, of hunting. Wildlife veterinarian and pathologist David Obendorf is well known for questioning the evidence held up by the eradication team as proof of a fox population in Tasmania He's gone through the archives. These foxes were attempted to be brought in using friendly sh uh, captains that were transiting regularly between London and Tasmania. In one piece, the Hobart Courier on the 18th of July 1846 reports... On Thursday, the Cornwall hounds met near the township of Oatlands to run a bagged Port Philippine fox, which, after a sharp run, was taken in Lake Delverton. So that's the first instance. We have incidences then uh, through the 1860s, 1870s. Uh, there's an allegation of, of importations using... Um, 
members of the military officers uh, in the 1890s. This was one that is, is contentious. And then well into 1910, 1930, 1940, 1970 and potentially 1990. From single foxes brought by showmen to the more prominent case reported in the 1870s when four foxes were imported on board the ship the Ethel. They were thrown over, overboard because of the, the pressure that the captain was facing of being charged with uh, importing uh, an animal that uh, was illegal. But one of them managed to swim ashore, uh, disappeared yeah, up Kelly steps uh, into, a, into a drain. It was caught and given to the mysterious Tasmanian Acclimatisation Society, never to be seen again. Despite intermittent reports of foxes ever since, Tasmania was considered fox-free until the late 1990s. That was until a story began circulating about three hunters who'd apparently brought three litters of fox cubs into the state in the boot of a car on board the Spirit of Tasmania. David Llewellyn, the then police and primary industries minister, was so concerned he ordered a formal police inquiry into the allegations. Widely circulated documents obtained under Freedom of Information show the secret police investigation found no evidence to corroborate the claims. Former professional hunter Ian Rist knows those accused and says it's just not true. There was an extensive police investigation and a very thorough police investigation involving some six detectives under Commander Ivan Dean and Detective Inspector Michael Otley um, including phone, every, every, everything was done, phone records, the whole, and they actually come up with no evidence at all to support or corroborate those allegations. The police briefed the minister, David Llewellyn, in 2001, and yet the next year he was still talking about the allegations. We very clearly now have a number of hotspots around the states where uh, someone has actually imported uh, uh, three sets of uh, fox cubs and distributed them in various areas around the state. Even today, David Llewellyn believes fox cubs were brought into the state by hunters. National Parks and Wildlife advised me that they were absolutely certain that the information that they had was accurate, uh, that some hunters had been to Victoria or on the mainland hunting deer and they'd brought uh, three litters of uh, fox cubs back to Tasmania and then released them when they were juveniles um, one lot in and around Longford another lot south of Oaklands and another lot on the east coast. He questions the thoroughness of the police investigation well, look, there was a whole lot of uh, scepticism in the community about uh, foxes and a lot of joking going on and uh, uh, people were treating it very, very, uh, uh, well, not very seriously at all. And, um, uh, you know, I, I think the police could have done a better job, frankly. These police were experienced investigators. We were told at a time by the Commissioner of Police that he required the best investigation that could uh, be had in relation to this. And that's exactly what happened. It was a very good investigation. David Llewellyn says sightings of foxes in the areas where the cubs were thought to have been released authenticated the information. That same year, he secured $400,000 from the Commonwealth and the state committed $1.2 million for a fox task force. Now, after 10 years and tens of millions of dollars, whether litters of fox cubs were brought into Tasmania or not, the question remains, are there foxes out there and are they breeding? Next week we'll examine the evidence gathered by the fox eradication team and look at what's happening on the ground to hunt and eradicate the elusive pest.